At Klondike Cheese Factory in Monroe, Wisconsin, generations of cheesemakers learned the trade by growing up in it. Grandpa came here in 1925 from Switzerland for the purpose of making cheese. Mom and Dad took over from Grandpa and Grandma. When I was five years old, I'd be out there hanging out with the farmers. Back in the day, you did everything, you did everything yourself. Well, there was Dad and one hired man, and, uh, and my two brothers and I. Grandpa just made Swiss cheese, and Dad pretty much made Swiss cheese. Steve, Dave, and Ron Buholzer thought they would just continue that tradition, but they were wrong. The economics of Swiss in the 70s, making it, weren't very good. The entire cheese industry was having issues. We made our last Swiss in 1970. We started making cheddar, and we made Colby, and we've made mozzarella. But the company continued struggling until fate intervened. We were doing business with a company in Chicago. And they weren't happy with the feta cheese they were getting. They asked if we could do it, and well, we didn't know. Because we didn't know what feta was. We'd never had it. So they sent a pail back with us, and we did some fooling around. And basically developed the recipe. Sent it to them, and uh, they liked it and uh, they became our first customer. Our sales really grew in a hurry. It moved faster than we thought it was going to. It pushed us to the point where we're barely staying ahead of what orders were. People take big risks going into new product areas. That's where the Center for Dairy Research comes in. They'll help you with anything. It's there to help grow the Wisconsin dairy industry. The center is funded by a unique partnership between dairy farmers, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board, and the Dairy Research Institute. They've always got a, a good pulse for you know, what is new out there that can help a cheese factory. It could be a new culture, a new enzyme, a new process, you know, new equipment. The Center for Dairy Research has just been great to us. We've been at this uh, effort of training and education <laughs> for quite a while. The first dairy school in the U.S. was at the university. There was a dairy school on campus since the 1890s. And the center has taken on that mantle over the last 28 years. So we are out there training them, are doing product development for them, are doing some research for them. So you can email or call those guys up at the CDR and they've got either an answer or a suggestion for you. And it's been very helpful to get the knowledge that we can from them to uh, keep moving. We submit samples of them, and then with their expertise up there, they can look at the cheeses and do some analysis. I think it's been really a great thing. They've been very instrumental in our success. Keeping companies like Klondike successful is key to growing Wisconsin's $27 billion a year dairy industry. It's important because, for example, here at Klondike, they employ over 150 people here in rural Wisconsin. We're supporting many families. They've got the opportunity to grow with the business also. Domestically, we're uh, the second biggest feta producer in the states. We're a big player in the feta cheese market. Still, Adam Buholzer knows they'll need more growth to sustain yet another generation. You always got to be looking for that, what's that next thing? Thinking about some sort of niche that could be for the fourth generation. They said, hmm, there's something going on in this Greek yogurt. Everybody's talking about it. There's a big buzz. We're a cheese plant. What would we need to do to get into breaking Greek yogurt? The yogurt was Adam's vision. Yeah, well, we always say it's Adam's fault. So. <laughs> if companies want to get into a new type of area, like into Greek yogurt, they need somebody to help them. You know, it's a big step, we've never done it. We have three master cheesemakers here in this family, but not yogurt guys. Are we really ready to do this? Can we actually sell it? You know, who's going to buy it? So very often we guide them through the whole process of, well, here's what's involved in that kind of product. I know Adam did a few trials up there in Madison at Babcock Hall there. Did a couple of different batches, changed the recipe again, made some more batches. So it probably took between one to two years of working on this before they said, okay, we think we're, we're, we're good enough to think about investing in building the plant. They were real instrumental in helping us get there with the Greek yogurt. Klondike can now produce up to 18 million pounds of yogurt a year. You know, it's exciting to try to keep growing and keep it going. So this is a big uh, change uh, for, for them, but that's part of the fun of it. We've always been proactive. When the opportunity came to try something new, we said, why not? It's that spirit that has sustained a way of life for nearly nine decades and four generations. 
And one of the things that I like the best about it is, you know, I get to see my family every day. You know, I'm proud of what my dad and uncles and grandpa and great grandpa have done. And we're gonna try to keep it rolling and make it successful. I do have four kids of my own and if we can get the fifth generation going, that, that'd be great. I'm really proud of the fact that uh, we've been able to do this. You get up every morning and say, hey, it's neat to go to work. Feels real good. Absolutely. Yeah. Blessed is the word. <laughs>